Hello and welcome to part 4 of this tutorial on how to create a full stack website using MongoDB, Express, React, and Node. In this part we'll set up our authentication middleware using JSON web tokens and we'll create two new user controllers, one to get all users and one to log in. So let's get started. In the backend middleware folder, create an authmiddleware.js file. Require a JSON web token as JWT. Express async handler. And our user model. Now create a protect constant and set that to the async handler. Our protect middleware will make sure a user is logged in when they send a call to our backend API. In the parentheses we'll create an async arrow function. Pass in request, response, and next as parameters. Inside the function body, create a token variable with let. Create an if check. Inside the parentheses, we'll check if we have our request.headers.authorization. And we check if it starts with bearer. And with how we're setting this up, it should. Inside the body of the if check, create a try catch block. Inside of the try, we'll set our token variable equal to request.headers.authorization. And we'll use the javascript.split method and we'll split by a blank space. By doing this, it will separate the word bearer from our token and store them both in an array. We need to access our token, which is the second entry, and since arrays start at 0, we pass in 1. Now create a decoded constant and set that to jwt.verify. Pass in token as the first parameter and our jwt underscore secret environment variable as the second. So process.env.jwt underscore secret. Next, set request.user equal to await user.findById with decoded.id as the param. FindById is a mongoose method we have access to on our models. We don't want to store our password with this user we get back once verified, so we'll use the select method and subtract password. After that, call next, since this is middleware and we need to move forward if we're successful so far. Inside the catch block, send a console.error with error as the parameter. Send a res.status of 404. And throw a new error will display something like not authorized. Now create an if check below the try catch block. So if we still don't have the token, we'll send a res.status of 401 and throw a new error displaying not authorized, no token. Our protect middleware is done. Now to make one to verify an admin. Create an admin constant. This middleware won't be asynchronous so set admin equal to a basic arrow function. We'll pass in request, response, and next as the parameters. Inside the function body, create an if check. 
In the parentheses, we'll check for our request.user and check if request.user.isAdmin is truish. If these two cases are true, we'll call next to allow our user to access whatever route we're protecting with admin rights. Else, we'll send a res.status of 401 and throw a new error displaying not authorized as an admin. Now set our module.exports to those two functions and we're done with this file. Inside of our server.js, I never actually used our error handler. So under our not found middleware, call app.use and I'll copy error handler from where we required it, then pass that in the parentheses. Inside our user controller file, we need to create a few more controller functions. Our first will be one to get all the created users. I'll copy the comments I created earlier and paste that below our register user controller. Switch the request type to a get request and switch the description to get all users. Create a constant called get all users and set that to the async handler. In the parentheses, create an asynchronous arrow function. For params, we'll pass in request and response. Inside the function body, create a users constant and set that to await user.find. Find is another mongoose method. Now send a response.json of users so we get all our users back. We're done with that controller, so I'll copy the comment and create another one down below. Switch the request type to post. It will be at slash API slash user slash login. Change the description to login user and get user. Now create a login user constant and set that to the async handler function. In the parentheses, create an async arrow function and pass in request and response for parameters. Inside the function body, we need to pull email and password out of the request.body. Create a user constant and set that to await user.find1 and we'll pass in an object with email. Now create an if check. Inside parentheses we'll check if we have user. And if we get user we also need to check if the passwords match. So we'll open another set of parentheses and await user.match password with our password as the param. If they match, we'll continue. So inside the body of the if check, we'll send a response.json and we'll pass in an object. The first entry will be underscore ID and we'll set that to user dot underscore ID. I'll copy this line down and change underscore ID to name. So we're setting name to user dot name. I'll do the same with email and is admin. For the last entry, we'll create our token. So set token to our generate token function and pass in user dot underscore ID. Now create the else condition. So if something goes wrong with the login, We'll send a res.status of 401 and throw a new error displaying invalid email or password. Add our login user function to the module.exports and we're done in the user controller for now. 
We need to create the new user routes. So inside user routes.js, I'll create another router instance for our login route. I want to finish our main route first, so we'll need to add a git request and it will run our git all users controller. For the login router, I'll add a dot post and this will be at slash login and the second parameter will be our login user controller. This route only has one controller attached, so we don't use dot route. We're done with these new routes. I'll switch over to Postman now and test out getting users. I'll add a new request to our user collection. This will be a get request at slash API slash user. And the description is it will get all users. I'll send the request, but get no response because I haven't started up the backend yet. I'll run the dev script, resend the request, and we get our existing users inside an array. If you want to test the login user route, go ahead and try that now. I'll go over it in the next video. And for now, that's it. Thanks for watching.